Hey, it's Coach D, and we're going to start the first half of Category 3 for the released Algebra 1 ELC question from 2012-13. Category 3 is linear functions. So everything that we've done in Category 1 and Category 2 is rolled up, and you have to understand that to get a grasp of linear functions. So, again, if you didn't work on the other sessions, we'll start off with a new document. You don't have to always do this. I'm just doing this for people that don't know it. So, home. One is new document, arrow to the right, no. And for this first equation, first question, we'll figure out which page we want to insert after we read the question. A graph is shown below. Which of the following equations are represented by this graph? Okay, well, we see that the graph is a line, so it's got to be a linear equation. And if we want to use the calculator and graph them, we want them to look like they're in slope and intercept form, which on your formula chart is this formula. So this first equation is in slope and intercept form. Let's go ahead and graph that one and see if it matches. So I'm going to insert a graph, which is 2. And the equation has got a fraction, so I'll put that negative sign in the front. Then I'll get my fraction control divide. 3 is in the numerator, arrow down to 2 in the denominator, then arrow to the right, and subtract 2. Make sure you are subtracting and you don't put a negative sign because the calculator will multiply if you put a negative sign. And I am missing something, so let me arrow back. I forgot my x, which is very important. Okay, now I'll hit enter. And clearly, these are two different lines. Without looking at the calculator, I should have noticed... I have a negative sign in front of the slope, but sometimes they'll put your equation in the form of y equals b plus mx, and sometimes you guys won't catch it, so that's why graphing it sometimes will help us. So we know i is not an option, so any of these answer choices, since they have combinations, any of them that have i are incorrect. So now, which one should I look at? Should I look at 2, 3, or 4 first? Well, what is in common with these two answer choices left is 2. So I don't actually want to look at 2 because if I do, it's not going to eliminate the answer choices. So I'm going to look at either 3 or 4. So when I look at 4, this is close to being in slope intercept form, but I need to get this negative 2 to the right side. And how can I do that? By adding 2 to both sides. And then I can graph that equation. So let's go on here and hit tab. And I can either enter a new equation or I can delete the one that's already there. So to make this less confusing, I'm just going to get rid of what's there. Don't get rid of the equal sign. Just get rid of the equation. So we want 2 thirds, so control divide. 2 in the numerator, 3 in the denominator. L to the right. Open parentheses x minus 6. Close your parentheses and then add 2. Now that looks like that might be the one but I can't really tell with the lines. I see the tick marks that's 2 and 3 and that looks like that works. But in case you wanted to see those grid lines you go to menu, view which is 2, grid which is 6, and you want those lines. And now you can see 4 is the answer choice. So 4 works. Now what's wrong with 3? Just to make sure we understand. If we graphed 3, we would see that it's a quadratic. But you have an x that would be multiplied times an x. And that alone should tell you that you'd have an x squared. But again, if you graph it, it's going to be a quadratic. Next problem. The late fee for overdue books in the library is 25 oops, let me go here. It's 25 cents per day per book. So that's the late fee for books. With a maximum late fee of $5. $5 is the max late fee. Which of the graphs models the total late fee for three books that were checked out at the same time? It's important to know they were checked out at the same time because if I have them late 
on different days, that could be a little more complex of a problem. So first off, let's note that if I check out one book and it's late, it's 25 cents. But this says I have three. So that times three would mean it's 75 cents per day for three books. Okay? Now, can we gather something from all of the answer choices? All of these graphs start at the origin, zero, zero. If our starting point is zero, do I start off paying anything? No. So this would be an easy equation, y equals 0.75x, and x would represent the number of days late. So I can graph this, control I, and I need two for a graph, and I'll graph that equation, 0.75x, y equals 0.75x. Again, I'd like to see the grid line so I can really compare it with the answer choice. So I'm going to go to menu, two for view, six for grid, and three for line. Now, I can see at one one, it looks like the line is a little bit below. It's below two two, okay? It looks like it's right on at four three. So we can come back to our answer choice and say, hmm, this first one is not right at 1, 1, but it's a little bit below. This answer choice, it's way below. This answer choice looks like it's right on it. This answer choice looks like it's halfway below. And this answer choice looks like it's just a little below. So let's see which answer choice, are there any that are right on? Well, if I look at my table for this graph, control T I can see it should be exactly on when I get to 4 so when X is 4 it should land on 3 this is 4 3 is up here 4 3 is here 4 3 is here and this one is on 4 3 so D is our answer choices so it's a couple ways that we could have incorporated utilizing the graph in that calculation Okay, which set of ordered pairs contains only points that are on the graph of the function? Points on the graph. Okay, so you are given an equation. It's not in slope-intercept form. It, y is isolated, so you can enter it in the calculator, but technically it's not in slope-intercept form. If I have an equation, and I want to match it up with points, these different relations contain points, I have to graph the equation and then pull up the table but there's something special we're going to do with the table. So first let's go ahead and graph it. So I'm going to insert a new page, a graph, and enter that equation exactly how it is. 12 minus 3x. Now I want to pull up a table, so that's control T. But I have numbers that are all spread out. These points are spread out. So my x values are not all lined up. So I want to make this this table, I'm going to use it with some intent. So I'm going to highlight all of my x values. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the table settings to utilize the ask feature. And I'm going to ask the calculator if I have this as an x value, what would the y value be? So we'll go to menu. Table is 2. Edit table settings is 5. And I'm not worried about where we're starting. What I want to do is I want to change this to ask for independent. Don't change dependent. Don't worry about any of this stuff, just independent. And hit OK. So it should be blank. Okay, You have to enter the x value. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these numbers that I highlighted, which are x coordinates. And once I find one that does not give the corresponding y value, this answer choice is out. So we'll start with negative 3. Should give me a negative 27, but it gives me 21. Oops, let me get in my pen. That's not going to work. So let's try negative 18. Should give me a 10, gives me a 66. Not going to work. 
negative 5. It should give me a 27. Okay, that one works, but let's check D to make sure. D has a negative 7, and that should give me a negative 9. That does not work. So sometimes they might have given you the first points, a couple of first points that would work, and then you'd have to drill down. But this one we got through pretty easily. Okay, a weightlifter is adding plates of equal weight to a bar. The table below shows the total weight, including the bar, that he will lift depending on the total number of plates on the bar. So you have a table, your x or independent values are on the left, your y or dependent values are on the right. And the question is, based on this information, which statement is true? Okay, all the answer choices look exactly the same except for the number. So we want to know the bar's weight without any plates. The bar's weight without any plates would be your starting point, your y-intercept. So we want to know what that plus b is. <clears throat> so we can do this in the calculator very easily. You don't have to have a calculator. You can find your change of x over here and your change of y. But again, the whole purpose of this is for calculators. So let's get a list. Control insert, a list and spreadsheet. Now, these are all linear, so I don't need to list the entire table. I need two points. So, two, four, 115, and 185. So I'm going to arrow to the right so that I'm under column A, and then I'm going to hit menu, 4 for statistics, 3, I'm sorry, 1 for stat calculations, and then 3 for linear regression. And this that's a good thing for me to have stumbled over those words, because I want you to know what goes with that number you're pushing. If you just know the numbers, then if you have a calculator that's in a different operating system or has been upgraded, you're not going to know why you press those numbers. So don't just say the number, say what goes with the number that you're pushing. So again, linear regression is where we're at. Okay, we arrowed over to the left to column A because it was automatically going to put the letter for the column we were under for X, and that's going to be A. So I'm going to tab and hit B. I need the square brackets, which is blue above the parentheses, so control open parentheses. This F4 doesn't matter for you unless you need to graph this. If you want to graph it, the calculator already has it saved as F of 4. So then you will tab until you get to OK or use your touchpad and slide over to the OK button. M, your slope, is 35. B, your y-intercept, is 45. So that would be the equation of this line. And we said we wanted B, which is the 45. Now, we can see if they picked 35, the reason that was wrong was that was the slope. 75, if you did this by hand and found your change of x to be 2 and your change of y to be 70, they would have gotten 70 because they didn't divide the change of y by the change of x. So they didn't divide. And the only thing I can think of as to why someone would have 25 is that they got their slope, I mean, they got their y-intercept, and then they had a piece of the slope, that change in y, and subtracted. That's the only way I can come up with the 25. All right, so our answer choice is C. Moving on. You've got two, gra two lines graphed on the same grid, and you've got some descriptions. Here's your answer choices. So the slope and y-intercept of the graph of f were changed. So graph of f was the one that you started with. That's the key thing. To make g, as shown below. Which statement describes the changes that were made of graph f? So again, we are changing graph f. Sometimes the question might change it and say the opposite. And so you have to pay attention to the way that they're wording it. So just looking at the graph, do we notice anything? 
Well, the line F goes down from left to right, so the slope is negative. And the graph of G goes up from left to right, the slope is positive. So when I look at my answer choices, what could I do to change a slope's sign, to change it from negative to, to a positive? You have to multiply by a negative to switch signs. So slope was multiplied by is how every one of these starts. If it doesn't have a negative, that's not going to work. So answer choice A and B are incorrect simply for that reason. So now I have the answer choices. They're not the same here. The end part might be similar, but right off the back, I see that this is different. Okay, so the y-intercept has increased by 5 to make the graph G or decrease. Well, what is the y-intercept to start? To start, it's here. What value is that? Looks like a 3. Down here, what does it end up being? A negative 2. So clearly it goes down. So we know that it's decreasing and not increasing. Now, how can we utilize this on the calculator? Well, if I can look at this and find out the equation of the line, then I can use those changes. So I notice two points on this line, okay? Y-intercept, that's already a part of my equation, a positive 3. My slope to get from that y-intercept to the next point that's perfectly on the intersection of two grid lines is to go down 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, so down 7 to the right 4. Down 7 to the right 4. That's the equation of your line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph this original line and then I'm going to show the change. So let's insert another page, a graph, which is 2, and graph the original line. Control divide, negative 7, arrow to the bottom over 4, arrow to the right, x plus 3. So now I'm going to insert another line by hitting tab and I'm going to type that same equation but I'm going to do what it says so let's try the answer choice that was that whichever one we don't know which one is right actually right now let's uh, try this negative half because we said it was not increasing let's say we didn't check that let's say if we multiply the slope by negative half so I'm going to type a negative control divide 1 over 2, and I'm going to multiply that by the original slope, negative 7. Oops, hold on a second. Control divide, and I'm going to put that negative in the top just so you can see it better. Negative 7 over 4, then put that x. And we had originally plus 3. But this answer choice says increase by 5. So that plus 3 needs to have a plus 5. And we can clearly see this one does not work. It's not even in the right quadrant. I can tab, arrow up to what I just did, change that plus 3 to a minus 3, get rid of this negative half and put a negative 2 hit enter and this does look like the correct equation so again you should be able to do a lot of these on paper but if you're not comfortable with that or you want to check your work you can show it on the calculator also <coughs> okay so we have the graph of line P is represented by the equation y equals one-fifth x minus one. If the slope of P is multiplied by negative 10. So the slope of P is multiplied by negative 10 to create line R, which is true about the graph of the two lines. So first of all, what is the slope? 
hope that you know that one fifth is the slope and negative one is the y intercept so are the lines gonna is their steepness gonna be affected or are we gonna shift the lines up or down vertically well slope affects steepness and B when you change that that is a vertical shift up or down and we said we're multiplying the slope so anything talking about up and down is not gonna be true so let's get a new page control I I want a graph to enter that original equation control divide one-fifth X minus one So again, we're going to do like we did in the last problem. We're going to retype that problem tab, but we're going to multiply that negative 10 by the slope. So that's the first thing I'm going to type, negative 10 times, and then our slope was control divide 1 fifth. Then have your x minus 1. When you graph it, these two lines intersect clearly intersect and I would hope again that you would remember things like parallel lines have the exact same slope so that should have stood out to you but again we're using that calculator to help us so the answer choice is B and then we might note here that would have the same slope because we sometimes come back to look at old problems Okay, so that's the end of part one of category three. Got just about the same number of problems in the next section. So, again, hopefully this is helpful for you. And I hope that you look at this next video and looked at the two prior to it. Thank you.